In this video, we learn about imaging in pyogenic meningitis and its differential diagnosis. We'll discuss this topic under these headings. First, we'll see the normal anatomy of meninges. Next, we'll see normal versus abnormal leptomeningeal enhancement and pachymeningeal enhancement. Then we'll come to the Biogenic meningitis topic where we'll see its causes, risk factors, routes of spread of infection, its clinical features and the main part imaging we'll see how meningitis looks on imaging and we'll see how complications of meningitis looks on imaging. Lastly we'll correlate it with CSF findings and find out the differential diagnosis. Meninges contains of three layers. The outermost layer is the dura matter. Underneath the dura matter, almost adherent to dura, we have arachnoid with a thin space in between. Next, we have the pia matter which adheres to the sulci and gyri. Above the dura matter, we have the epidural space. Between the dura matter and arachnoid, we have subdural space. And beneath the arachnoid, we have the subarachnoid space which contains the flowing CSF. Pachymeninges is a collective term which indicates dura matter plus arachnoid matter. And leptomeninges is a collective term to indicate arachnoid plus pia matter. The meninges contains blood vessels and normally do enhance in the contrast enhanced CT and MRI. The normal meningeal enhancement appears as thin, smooth, short and discontinuous, well demarcated, symmetric enhancement with short segment convexity of meningeal enhancement which is less than 3 cm in a continuity. There will be no supracellar cistern or ventricular wall enhancement associated with a normal enhancement. In cases of abnormal meningeal enhancement, there will be thick irregular nodular or asymmetrical enhancement which will extend deep into the sulci and at a stretch we can see long segment diffuse convexity meningeal enhancement which is for more than 3 cm length. Another criteria is if we see meningeal enhancement for 3 contiguous segments on 1.5 tesla MR images in a sequence that shows abnormal leptomeningeal enhancement. First, we'll see what all can cause enhancement of meninges. Pachymeningeal enhancement can be caused by intracranial hypotension, idiopathic infectious diseases, inflammatory diseases like sarcoidosis, or in cases of metastasis and subarachnoid bleed. Leptomeningeal enhancement can be seen in infection, inflammatory cases, acute stroke, and in cases of metastasis. Coming to our topic, pyogenic meningitis, what are the risk factors? Elderly patients, immunocompromised patients, patients who are diabetic and suffering with malignancy and alcoholism are the main risk factors. Etiology for pyogenic meningitis depends on the age group. In less than 2 month old babies, group B streptococcus is the main culprit. In older children and young adults, they are affected by Neisseria meningitidis. In adults, we have streptococcus pneumonia as the main causative agent and in cases of patients suffering with trauma or iotrogenically induced meningitis staphylococcus aureus is the main cause in immunocompromised patients listeria monocytogenes is the main cause roots of spread of infection to the brain there is hematogenous dissemination which is the most common type of spread, direct implantation in cases of trauma and iatrogenic cases. There can be local extension from the localized infections like sinusitis, orbital cellulitis, otitis media, mastoiditis, etc. There can also be perineal spread which is seen in viral meningitis. In cases of pyogenic meningitis, leptomeninges are involved and whenever leptomeninges are involved in any cause, these are the common clinical features we see. In infants with leptomeningitis, we can see altered state of consciousness, bulging, fontanelle, failure to thrive, fever, 
irritability seizures and vomiting kernick sign can be elicited on evaluation in adults with leptomeningitis you can have fever headache meningitis or neck rigidity photophobia again kernick sign can be elicited in adults coming to the imaging modalities imaging is not usually used for initial diagnosis diagnosis will be made clinically but it's used for confirming the suspected cases of meningitis and also to rule out meningitis mimics like neoplasm also we can evaluate the complications of meningitis and we can look for increased intracranial pressure before performing a lumbar puncture the modalities which we use are ct especially contrast enhanced ct and mri again contrast enhanced mri is preferred newer sequences like magnetic tran magnetization transfer imaging and diffusion tensor imaging also are coming up while performing ct first we'll take a non contrast enhanced sequence in which there's no contrast they, we can see sulcal effacement because of diffuse cerebral edema we can also see dilated ventricles or hydrocephalus which is a complication of meningitis in non contrast sequence sometimes we can see hyperdense meninges also but it's a rare finding next on contrast enhanced ct we can see the leptomeningeal enhancement this can be seen along the cerebral convexity sulcal spaces also along basal cisterns which is mainly found in tubercular but also pyogenic meningitis can show it contrast enhanced mr also has similar findings we can see leptomeningeal enhancement along the sulcal spaces we can also look for complications of meningitis in mr we should always correlate csf findings in meningitis with the imaging findings normally we see less than 5 cells of lymphocytes less than 40 mg protein and more than 50% of blood glucose in csf in cases of pyogenic meningitis we find leukocytosis and we find less than 50% of blood glucose present because the glucose is used up by the bacterial infection next in cases of tubercular we find lymphocytes and again bacteria use up glucose and we find less than 50% similarly fungal and viral we have lymphocytosis and less than 50% of blood glucose in all the cases of infection we find elevated protein in the csf next we'll move on to the complications of meningitis the first and major complication is hydrocephalus and usually this will be a non communicating hydrocephalus or an obstructive hydrocephalus this can be seen on nsct cct and mri extra axial collections can be seen in meningitis as a complication this can be either sterile or purulent which is empyematous sterile complications are like subdural effusions can be seen purulent there will be epidural or subdural abscesses which can be seen on ct and mr cerebritis and abscess formation in the parenchyma can also be a complication which can be seen on non contrast ct as well defined lesion with hyperdense rim there can be associated hydrocephalus seen on cct we can see it as a peripherally or ring enhancing lesion with leptomeningeal enhancement next complication which can be found is the ventriculitis inflammation of the ependymal layer which can be seen on contrast enhanced ct or mri where there will be ependymal enhancement next we can see thrombotic complication and infarcts on non contrast we can see the delta sign in superior sagittal sinus this is just an example in ce ct we can see it as an empty delta sign delta sign is hyperdensity within the sinus empty delta sign is the hypodense filling defect surrounded by the contrast filled vessel 
नेक्स्ट वी कैन हैव क्रेनल नर्व इन्वॉल्वमेंट यूजली फाउंड इन वायरल मैनिंजाइटिस कैन ऑल्सो बी सीन इन पायोजेनिक मैनिंजाइटिस मोस्ट कॉमनली इन्वॉल्व इज द वेस्टिबुलर कॉक्लियर नर्व एनी कॉज ऑफ लेफ्टो मैनिंजल एनहेंसमेंट कैन बी अ डिफरेंशियल डायग्नोसिस फॉर पायोजेनिक मैनिंजाइटिस इन्फेक्टिव डिफरेंशियल डायग्नोसिस मेजरली विल बी ट्यूबरकुलर मैनिंजाइटिस इन विच वी कैन सी लेफ्टो मैनिंजल एनहेंसमेंट प्रिडोमिनेटली इन द बेसल सिस्टर्स and hydrocephalus is more common in tubercular meningitis because of thick exudates causing obstruction there can be infarcts due to vasculitis and we should look for concomitant tuberculomas in brain and chest tuberculosis fungal meningitis there can be thick nodular leptomeningeal enhancement seen whereas in pyogenic it will be smooth and thin it can be associated with cryptococcomas or gelatinous pseudocyst as cryptococcus is the major organism vascularizations can also be found please like share and subscribe for more videos